Okay. What's going on, everybody? My name is MT, and welcome back to Nerd Herd, a show where I just talk about nerd stuff, and either you care about it, or you don't care. Also, if you're wondering why my voice sounds like this, I'm going through puberty. No, I'm not. I just have a cold. Which is just like puberty, in the sense that I randomly woke up one morning hating everything. So if you see a booger or two during this video, I apologize in advance. <coughs> Jesus Christ. But holy s***. It has been a long time since I have made one of these Mother Dang Nerd Herd episodes. I'm sorry everyone, but technically, I'm an adult now, and being an adult means that money and free time are about as real as the Chronicles of Narnia, or political campaign promises. But anyways, thank you all for your patience, thank you all for your support, and most of all, thank you all for 9,000 subscribers! Like, what?! I mean, I'm grateful and stuff, but like, I'm, I'm really concerned that you guys are crazy because I'm an idiot. I'm just an idiot on the internet who talks too much. You should you should probably stop. <laughs> but anyway, yes, let's get on with some news. Apple has just unveiled a new iPhone today. Just kidding. I said I'd talk about some news. They literally just did what they always do and released the same phone again. That's not news. So, Captain America Civil War. I take it that you all have seen the new trailer, right? I have, and I am not impressed. Mostly because they have not been sticking to the original source material. Everybody's excited that they finally got to see footage of Spider-Man. But like, you would have thought we would have gotten some Robert E. Lee footage by now. Or at least a glimpse of a Daniel Day-Lewis Abraham Lincoln. Or maybe a slave or two. But no! All we got was some stupid, pulse-pounding action and a teenager that looks straight out of a PlayStation 2 cutscene. That is not the Civil War I learned in school, sir. But you know who knows? Maybe it was Robert E. Lee who shot War Machine out of the sky. I mean, in his defense, three black main characters in one movie and no slave master in sight is kind of unheard of. I mean, what if they learn how to read? Anyway, sarcastic racism aside, this movie is going to be long. And how long, you ask? Try two and a half hours long. Like, I'm probably gonna walk out of that theater like, do 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 do. Wow, the constellations sure are different. Wait a minute. Oh shit, I missed my birthday. If you do not tell your parents that you are going to be seeing this long ass movie beforehand, I can guarantee you that you are gonna see your ass on the side of a milk carton. Well, maybe not your ass, just your face. Unless you have a face that looks like ass, then I I don't know what to I don't know what to say. Probably get a better face. Also, do they still do that whole missing person milk carton thing? I hope not because that's kind of a depressing way to eat cereal. And part of the reason why this movie is so long? post credit scenes! I know, right? In a Marvel movie? Like, where are we? This isn't my universe. When, since when does Marvel have post credit scenes? Never. Yup, according to director Joe Russo, Civil War may have up to three post credit scenes. Three! That's basically a post-credit short film! I don't know why Marvel would need three post-credit scenes after a movie, but something tells me that an extra scene was probably shoved in there as part of Sony and Marvel's Spider-Man deal. And speaking of Spider-Man, if you guys are nervous about whether or not Marvel and Sony chose the right guy to replace the Andrew Garfield Peter Parker, don't be. At least, that's what Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn is saying. Not only does James Gunn love Civil War as a movie, he's also taken to the internet to say that Tom Holland is the best on-screen Spider-Man in the history of ever. Like, guys, he's comparing Tom Holland's casting to that of Heath Ledger, Robert Downey Jr., and Chris Pratt. Like, okay, James Gunn, let's, let's settle down there, okay? This is what Obama must mean by gun control. <laughs> I'm sorry. That joke was unacceptable. You boy got boogers yet? I hope not. And I'm sure you guys have all heard this by now, but just in case you haven't, actress Zendaya has been cast in a key role in Marvel and Sony's upcoming solo Spider-Man film. And just what is a Zendaya, you ask? I don't f***ing know. I mean, all I know is that she was on one of Disney Channel's Dogs with the Blogs, and now the entirety of the internet, collectively and religiously, sucks this girl's ass on a daily basis. Look, call me old, but I just don't know why this girl is so famous. Like, I just don't. I mean, I, I don't hate her, and like, she's a very pretty person, but like, 
I just don't know why I can't walk to the bathroom without someone trying to convince me that Zendaya is actually the second coming of the Dalai Lama Christ. But anyways, early reports have been saying that she'll be playing somebody by the name of Michelle, but a lot of people are speculating that that's just a secret code name or just straight up false. But a lot of people are leaning towards the possibility that she is actually being secretly cast as Mary Jane Watson. And to that I say... Are you, are you guys stupid? I mean, did you all not see that classic ass Spider-Man look in that Civil War trailer? Marvel has wanted to be involved in making a Spider-Man movie for more than a decade. So if you think that they're going to radically change the race of one of Spider-Man's main love interests, you would be very much mistaken. Just saying. I mean, I could be wrong and she could very well be playing Mary Jane Watson and I would have no problem with that, but my money is on Zendaya playing a character by the name of Anya Corazon, aka Spider-Girl girl, a character that would help kick off the cinematic Spider-Verse that I seriously believe Marvel and Sony are planning together. Like guys, everything is pointing to a Spider-Verse movie. They just announced a Venom solo movie that is outside of the MCU, and they're still working on that animated Spider-Man movie that is outside of the MCU. Like. I don't know what people, it's, I feel like this is obvious at this point. Maybe I'm just crazy, but they're making a cinematic Spider-Verse. It's just, why would you make two movies that are separate from your main Spider-Man? But anyways, Daredevil Season 2 has just hit the Netflix. Have you guys been watching it? I have. Don't worry, I won't spoil it for you. Matt Murdock was blind the whole time. I don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck, I don't, I, I think that we can all agree that when it comes to Marvel, Netflix is doing the Lord Jesus Zendaya's work. And Jeremy Renner wants in on the action. At a recent comic convention, Renner said that he would be very, very much open to the idea of starring in a Hawkeye Netflix series if Marvel was up for doing such things. Dear Marvel, please be up for doing such things. That would be amazing. Hawkeye is like one of the most underused characters in the entire MCU. And with the power of Netflix and their super dark and gritty world, you can make the CW's Arrow look like that Disney Robin Hood movie with the fox, or one of those slingshot minigames in Ocarina of Time, where you couldn't get the f***ing rupees because they kept moving to the left and to the right. Too bad, my asshole. This game is rigged. I want to talk to your manager. Oh, oh wait. Oh. Uh... Uh, never mind. Anyways, guys, Batman v Superman is coming out this Friday. And if there's one thing I like in my Batman v Superman movies about Batman fighting Superman, it's Wonder Woman. But if you are looking forward to seeing Wonder Woman be her most wonderfulest self in this upcoming movie, I'm sorry to say, but according to producer Deborah Snyder, she will very much not be that. According to Snyder, Batman v Superman will be the garlic bread to the main course that will be Wonder Woman's full power. A main course that will be served when the Wonder Woman movie comes out in 2017, next year. While she may be a badass in Batman v Superman, there's plenty more badassiness to come. Yes, badassiness is a word. I talked to Merriam-Webster just the other day. He was like, yeah, that's fine. I, yeah, I made that word when I made other words. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you haven't subscribed yet, do it, or just leave a thumbs up, or share this video. That also makes me happy on the inside. And also, thank you guys so much for over 9,000 subscribers. Like, that's crazy. I'm about to hit 10,000. Like, it's almost time for me to forget about the little people. That's great. Just kidding. No, you guys are so great. And I, I just can't believe it. It's so surreal. Like, I would not be this happy in my life if it wasn't for you guys. So, thank you. And geez, it's been so long since I've done a nerd herd that, like, I have so many, like, pieces of fan art and animations and shout outs that I need to give. But I just, I, I don't know where to begin because like I have all this stuff like scattered throughout my Twitter my Instagram that I just I haven't had time to collect all of them but like thank you guys so much if you have submitted fan art or animations or whatever and you guys were great and I'm very blessed to have you guys as subscribers I just you guys are top notch but shout out to Emran Ahmet because he asked for a cheeky shout out on my Twitter so I decided to give him one because that's the last one I saw. I don't know exactly what constitutes as a cheeky shout out. I don't know if I have to do this. Shout out to Emran Emmet. I'm saying your name wrong. M Emran Emmet. This is a cheeky shout out. I don't know what I'm doing. I've lost control of my life. It's a, it's official. Anyways, my name is MT and you just heard a word from a nerd. Catch you guys later.